Microscopic Aspects of Kinetics, Chemical Reaction Mechanisms. This is Chemical Kinetics Part 6. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about chemical reactions at the molecular level. So basically, how do individual species, and so those can be molecules, atoms, ions, interact with each other during the reaction to produce products? And we can answer this question with the chemical reaction mechanism. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Basically, what is a chemical reaction mechanism? And a chemical reaction mechanism is basically just a sequence of elementary reactions, and we call these elementary steps, that are involved in the conversion of reactants to products. So they're very simple steps on the pathway from reactants to products. And an elementary step basically is a step that can't be subdivided into simpler parts. So it's the very simplest step you can possibly write with the reactants and products involved. And reaction mechanisms often have at least two steps, but they can have you know five or six steps. So there can be quite a few. There can even be more than that. Very commonly, you'll see three or four steps in a reaction mechanism. Now, the nice thing about elementary steps is that you can write the rate law using the coefficients for the reactants. Now, we can't do this for an overall reaction, but we can do it for an elementary step. So the reason why we can use the coefficients for the reactants to write the rate law is that we've already broken down the reaction into the very simplest form in this particular step. So for example, we have nitrogen dioxide reacting with fluorine to produce our products. And this is an elementary step. It's the very simplest step we can possibly write. Notice that the rate constant is labeled with a, a number, a subscript number. So that means that this would be the rate constant for step one, for instance. That, that's what that little one would indicate. And we can write the rate law simply as rate equals, there's our rate constant, the specific rate constant for the step, and then nitrogen dioxide to the first power because there's an assumed one coefficient. Same goes for fluorine. The coefficient is one. And so usually we won't write these, but the rate law can just be written by inspection from the elementary step. We call the number of reactant molecules that react in, a, in an elementary step, we call that the molecularity. And so the number of reactant molecules in this elementary step is 2. So we would say the molecularity of this step is 2. So we're literally saying that nitrogen dioxide collides in this step with fluorine to produce these products, which will then go on and react further in the mechanism. OK, so a word of caution. You may not assume that a, a reaction is an elementary step unless you're specifically told it's an elementary step. So if you see a reaction in isolation and you're told that it's an elementary step, then you can write the rate law directly by inspection. Or if it's a step in a mechanism, then it's always an elementary step. So you would be able to write the rate law for that step by inspection by looking at the coefficients. Otherwise, you should not do that because you will not get the correct answer. OK, so as an example, again, we saw this in the very first presentation. We reacted T-butyl bromide with methanol in a boiling solution. We ended up with methyl T-butyl ether and hydrogen bromide. And remember, this was a first order nucleophilic substitution reaction mechanism. So this is a, an example type of organic reaction mechanism. And just a little reminder, we had three steps in this mechanism. Each of these is an elementary step. So this first step is the simplest step we can possibly write. So we start with our T-butyl bromide and we end up with a carbocation and this bromide anion. Next, methanol reacts with our carbocation. In the second step, 
to form this species. Then another methanol molecule comes along, takes that proton, the electrons go back on this oxygen. We end up with methyl T butyl ether and this protonated methanol. Now, notice I've labeled all of these as elementary step one, elementary step two, etc. Usually we don't do that either, but I really want to bring the point home that each one of these steps is an elementary step. So if we were to write the rate law for this first step, for instance, we would just write rate equals K1 and then concentration of T butyl bromide. And there's an assumed coefficient of one here. And notice this also is labeled as the slow step. We're going to find out why that's important in just a second. Because the slow step is the rate determining step. So basically it controls the whole rate of the chemical reaction. It determines the kinetics for the entire reaction. So that means that the chemical reaction can't happen any faster than the slowest step. So we would call it the rate determining step. You will also see it called the rate limiting step. So here's a way to visualize it. So we have a series of funnels and we're pouring water through these series of funnels. And the small funnel is in a different place in the reaction. Okay, in, in a different step, shall we say. So here it's first, and that's going to control the flow. And notice that the liquid flows through the second and third funnels just right away. So there's no buildup, but the buildup is here. So that limits the flow of water through these three funnels into this flask. Same thing here, except now the first one is large, so water just goes straight through it. Second one builds up and controls the flow. Third step, fast, liquid just proceeds right through there. And then finally, we have fast, fast, and then slow. So this is a way to visualize what the slow step does in a mechanism. Fast steps in a kinetic mechanism don't show up in the rate law. And that's because they're invisible. They have no effect on the overall reaction rate. Another term that we need to talk about is something called a reaction intermediate. And an intermediate is a species that's involved in a mechanism step that is not a reactant or a product. And intermediates are transient species. They, are, they only exist for a short period of time. We're going to learn how to analyze two different types of reaction mechanisms. And what we're going to do is write a rate law by looking at the reaction mechanism, looking for the slow step, and determining what the rate law is from the mechanism. And so we're going to do two types. There are lots of types of mechanisms, but we're going to pick a couple of examples to look at and to learn how to analyze mechanisms. First one is reactions where the first step in the mechanism is the slow step. So the rate limiting step is first. And then another type is reactions that involve one or more fast equilibrium steps. And we'll talk about what fast equilibrium steps are in the next presentation before we write the rate law for a reaction that involves this type of step. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that reaction mechanisms can never be proven correct. We can collect experimental evidence for a mechanism and we can support the proposed mechanism with this evidence. But we can't actually say that we've proven the mechanism. There are many mechanisms that have so much experimental evidence that they are generally accepted, but they are still not proven. Now, one way to support a proposed reaction mechanism is to show that the rate law that can be derived from the mechanism matches the experimentally derived rate law. And that's why we want to learn how to derive a rate law from a mechanism. We want to compare it to the experimentally derived rate law and see if it matches. If it does match, then that mechanism may be correct. And so the process would be to use the method of initial rates or the integrated rate equation and then graphing it to determine the experimental rate law. And then after you do this, then you're going to compare it to the rate law derived from the mechanism. 
And as I said before, if they match, then the mechanism may be correct. All right, so I will post example problems separately, but it will be after part seven, where we are going to learn how to analyze kinetic mechanisms and derive the rate law.